Students of Stepping Stone English School Dongadi are going to attain conference. The scientists of NASA put Dhanjadi from the from the part of the science planetarium and the science center. Hello to everyone. Thank you very much for coming here to participate with us. And first of all, I want to welcome Dr. Dan Jingler, a senior scientist of Johnson Express in Houston, NASA. And I request you to give him a big what? Round of applause. Ultra pure gas, we need to have ultra pure nitrogen, 
And all of that is what really drives what we do. So I got my PhD in science. I never thought I would spend so much time worrying about air conditioners. But that is what has been a serious difference between getting as much science out of the samples as we can right now, so that the billions of dollars that have been spent on the samples are giving us return, but also preserving them. So the first samples came back, the Apollo samples came back before I was born in 1950, uh, 1969. Yet we still have enough of them left that the current generation of scientists are able to study them and learn something important. And we're trying to keep enough of them ready for your generation of scientists to be able to do a similar study. Uh, what are the steps that uh, NASA is taking to make the moon more inhabitable for, hum for humans? All right, the question is, oh, you don't need to repeat it, say it in the microphone. How is NASA going to make the, uh, the moon more inhabited, um, inhabitable for humans? So it has to do with resources. So it takes a lot of money to take anything into space and to take anything to the South Pole. And so um, it's about learning to what we call live off the land. So it was sort of the question I answered earlier about going to the South Pole where you can get water, whether you can build part of the habitat from the moon itself rather than having it bring it to the Earth. So it's about learning how to get what you need from space as much as anything else. So, great and, uh, question. Yeah. And the second question is like, Mars has two moons, right? Mars, right. yeah, Deimos and Phobos. So I'm actually wondering that why aren't the moon Deimos and Phobos perfect circles? Why are they like, you know, rocky objects? Uh, so the question is why, yeah, why is Mars moons not circular? They're too small. The way physics works is your body has to get to be a certain size, which is like 150 kilometers or a little more, and then gravity, the way gravity works is it'll circularize the object. So small bodies, like from the asteroid belt, they tend to not be round. When you get to be hundreds of kilometers across, then you become round. Great questions. Sure. Rock samples from the different parts of our solar system. From the outer solar system. Yes, so there's the, the, the Mars rovers, that's as far out as we get right now. So the, there are, the Perseverance rover is on Mars actively collecting samples to get ready to come back to Earth, say, 10 years from now. And so that is the farthest out that NASA or any other space agency is currently collecting moon rock, or sorry, rocks to bring back to Earth. So it's just, it takes a really long time to go to say Jupiter or any of the planets farther out. Like six, seven, ten years each direction. And so we're going to start with Mars and then we're going to move farther out. seems to be yes. You have to add a 
little something to it because there's no biology on the moon, and so there's bacteria in the soil that are per quite important for growing it. You also need a little bit of fertilizer, a little bit of carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, the things that are in fertilizer. So if you can bring a little bit of that with you, then yes, you can actually use lunar soil to grow uh, materials.